Let us do another example of finding the volume of solid using the technique of cross-sectional slicing. And this time we're going to consider the volume of a pyramid. Uh, so we want to find the standard volume formula for a pyramid uh, whose base length is this number L and the height of the pyramid is H, as you can see right here. Uh, just to make things a little bit more clear uh, in terms of the diagram here, which this diagram is taken from James Stewart's calculus textbook. Uh, the height is this dimension right here, and then the length is going to be this dimension right here. So this is our L value. Um, you can see then a, a two-dimensional diagram of this thing right here. Now, this is going to be very similar to how we tried to compute the volume of a cone uh, that we did in a previous lecture here, but we can't use the technique of solids of revolution. The wash or disk method wouldn't be appropriate because there's no type of rotational symmetry here. But what we can see, like the diagram illustrates, is that we can think of this pyramid as a stack of squares, where the squares, these cross-sectional squares, are getting smaller and smaller and smaller as you move from the base of the pyramid up to the apex over here. Now for convenience, I'm going to align my pyramid so that the apex coincides with the origin, 0, 0. And then the height of the, of the pyramid is aligned with the x-axis, where the x-axis is this altitude of the period. Um, it passes through the center of all the respective uh, squares that we see there. So if we want to calculate the area of this thing, the area is going to be the integral of the air of the sorry not the area of this thing uh, official JK right there my goof uh, we want to find the volume of this thing the volume is going to be the integral of the area times dx and so let's first figure out what bounds do we have for the x coordinate well like we said over here it goes from the origin x equals zero all the way up to this value right here which is x equals h. So we're going to get integrate from 0 to h. For a lot of these volume problems, we can actually position the solid in such a way that the geometry is simplified. Like the reason we placed the apex at the origin is so that we could integrate with respect to 0 here, uh, which would be very desirable from an arithmetic point of view. Well, now continuing on, the area of each of these cross sections, we have to find the area of a square. And so if we, much like the previous example we've seen, if we want to find the area of a square, let's say that the side length of one of these squares is s, then the area is going to be an s squared, but we have to represent the side length s with respect to the variable x, uh, so because we're integrating with respect to x. And that's where this two-dimensional picture comes into play here. Look at a, a typical cross-section. This is the side of our square. Now, if we look at this, and we look at this point right here, it has coordinates x comma y. Um, y is given by some generic x here. The side length s is going to equal 2 times the y coordinate. So that's a good step in the right direction. Our volume is going to look like the integral from 0 to h. Uh, we're going to get 2y quantity squared, so we get 4y squared dx. But we still have the same predicament. How do we represent y in terms of the variable x? Well, if we consider this side length right here, um, this is a line which would have the form y equals mx right here. Um, typically, it's y equals mx plus b, but as it goes through the origin, uh, the y-intercept is just zero. So let's identify the slope of this line right here. The standard slope formula comes into play. Y, or m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We're basically just making a proportions argument, a similar triangle type argument, that the, the square will get proportionally bigger the farther away it gets from the apex. So we'll use two points we know on this line. There's the origin 0, 0, and then there's this point P right here, which would have the coordinates, the x coordinates h, and the y coordinate um, would be half of L, right? Because the entire thing is L, so we're going to get half of L, um, L over 2. And so putting those things in there, we're going to get 1 half L minus 0 over H minus 0. That simplifies just to be L over 2 H, uh, what you see right there. And so then uh, putting that together, uh, we're going to put this L over 2 H in for Y right there. 
Uh, so plugging that in, that'll the the two on the bottom was going to square to become a four. It'll cancel with the four that's in the numerator, and so we end up with the integral from zero to h. Uh, we're going to get an l squared over h squared when you plug that thing in and simplify, uh, like so. Oh, I forgot the x. I'm sorry. I knew something was missing. My spider sense was tingling. Uh, when you plug in. Because uh, this right here, the L over 2H was just a slope. We plug that back into the function Y equals L over 2HX. You plug that in, so you'll get an L squared on top. You'll get a 4H squared on bottom and X squared as well. So we, here we have the following. The L squared over H squared is a constant. We can factor out of the integral. Uh, we're left with just an X squared. The antiderivative of X squared is going to be, let me write this first. We're going to get... Um, x cubed over 3, plug in 0, plug in h, and so we end up with an L squared h cubed over 3h squared. Uh, there's some h's on top and bottom, they cancel, so h squared cancels with this right there, leaving just one h in the numerator, and then this reproduces the traditional pyramid volume formula. We're going to get the volume of a pyramid as one-third the length squared times its height. Um, which notice the length squared, this is just the area formula of the base. And so for honestly, what our what our exercise shows us is that uh, we if we take any pyramid, right? You could have any blobity blob uh, base you want. But if this comes to a point, this gives you this pyramid. Um, and then we get that the volume of this pyramid is going to just be whatever this is right here. Your volume will just be one third the area times h, where h is the height of this pyramid right here. Which if you think of this more generalized pyramid, right, because you have like square pyramids and triangular pyramids and what have you, you can think of a cone actually as a special case of this as well, where the area of the circle at the bottom, right, is pi r squared, and then it comes to a point where the volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. And so this cross, this technique of cross-sectional slicing is a little bit more challenging. Maybe it's a lot more challenging. Who knows? But it is it is more challenging approach to appreciate and understand how to study these integrals. But has much gr wider reach than the the technique of these solids of revolution that we had seen in previous parts of this lecture here.